point tonight. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us tonight. Um, so I do not have a PowerPoint, but I did take a lot of copious notes um, this past Saturday and throughout this teaching. So this teaching on church modification versus Christ transformation. I'm sure not only in my own life, but we are all transforming after not only this month's message, but these past eight months. Can y'all believe September is almost here? So, but anyway, let me get back. So church modification, and I'm going to go, I'm going to grab my notes real quick. So with church modification, that is not our vein. But before I get ahead of myself, let me go back. So let's talk about Christ transformation. And so the scripture that we were given by Apostle Teresa on this past Saturday was to let your roots grow down deep in God, which came from Colossians 2 and 7. Now, the visuals that she gave through her PowerPoint through Canva with the live tree, the natural tree versus the modified tree. That live tree, I'm going to ask you all to put in the chat some of the things that you saw based on that live tree. I'm also going to ask you to put inside of the chat things that you've seen throughout this month that tells you and shows you what modification looks like. And so I'm going to stop and wait for you all to do that. Yes, Minister, Kachita, Minister Chiquita, not being able to get away, get away from those robotic roots, very mechanical. The other thing that we saw on the mechanical tree is that there were wires all over it. Loveless, Marion, yes, absolutely. Loveless, artificial love, artificial roots. Those roots did not go down deep into the ground like they're supposed to. Nathan, yes, the tree being twisted and deformed with the trunk. Absolutely correct. It was phenomenal, those points. And so, yes, Claudia, thank you. So I'm still stuck on the reptilian twist from the previous lesson, twisted. The tree was twisted. The tree was actually bent over to the point that it could break at any given time. The other thing that I saw about that tree is that, that instead of the roots were going down deep into the ground, the roots were shallow. And not only were the roots shallow, but there were roots that were actually coming up through the ground that looked to me almost like a broken bone would look on a leg or an arm, completely out of character for what it was supposed to be and is supposed to be. That's right, Nathan, the roots weren't strong enough to go deeper. That is absolutely correct. They were basically on the top part of the top, underneath the top soil is where the roots were. And we know they're supposed to go far, far down into the ground. And the other thing with roots, they connect to one another. They actually provide vitamins and nutrients to each other, to the other roots under the ground. And so as you can, so as we start this and we start applying this to ourselves, this is what we're getting away from. This is what Christ came to move us away from. He came to move us away from artificial love. He came to move us away from shallow relationships. He came to move us away from shallow ideologies, shallow philosophies, the times, the things of our time, even the things of their time. So I'm going to read to you 
the scripture, Psalms 1, and we all know it well, the way of the righteous and the end of the ungodly. So blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. That is us. We are like these trees planted in God and doing his will, not our will, not our idea, not our philosophy, not a philosophy of someone else, not a philosophy of a celebrity. It's none of those things. God gave us his wisdom through his holy scriptures. And Paul modeled that in Acts 17. So when Paul went to Athens, Greece, and went to Apollonia and all of these other places, Paul was reasoning with these people with scriptures. He wasn't reasoning with these people based on their ideologies, their philosophies, anything that they might have learned as they passed by the way with other people, with other leaders. So Paul was literally strengthening the people there who were hungry for, for the word of God, who were looking for the truth, who were looking for the way, who were looking for the life and not artificial life, just like that tree. That tree had artificial life and light coming right up out of it. So thank you all for sharing what you remembered about modification. So now I'm gonna move over to transformation. What do you all remember about the healthy tree? And I can, I'm going to ask you to also put those in the chat as well. Tell me what you remember about the healthy tree. Tell me what you remember about the transformative part of the lessons that we have been listening to and reading through this past month, these past several months. And I will wait to uh, hear what your responses are. Marion said wholeness. Absolutely. That is exactly what God is after. Our wholeness. His likeness and image in each and every one of us. Healthy through and through, Minister Chiquita. Absolutely. Anybody else? Thank you, Nathan. Roots went deep and it locked and it, sorry, it looked effervescent. It looked like life. It absolutely did. That tree was strong and it was tall. And those roots, like Nathan said, went so far down into the ground. Each set of roots had a life of its own. They were literally producing after themselves. I'll say another thing the tree was actually operating in its identity as a tree. It wasn't trying to be anything else or anybody else. It was in its identity as a tree. And that's what God is looking for through each and every one of us to walk and carry out the identity that he has placed in each and every one of us that we are not to operate as Apostle Janita characterize it in artificial intelligence. That is not who we are. That is not what he instructed us to be. Yes, Nathan, that is correct. Modification leads to false identities, correct. It really does. And yes, Minister Chiquita, we can bear fruit of our kind or the tree can bear fruit of its kind because we know that trees do produce fruit and nuts and different types of nutrients for us to partake in. 
and it continues to reproduce after that. It never changes up. It doesn't one day decide that it's a tree and then the next day decide it's a frog. It stays and maintains and reproduces after what it was intended to be in the first place. So Apostle Teresa gave us the assignment to go and read about King Uzziah. Now, King Uzziah became a, became a king at the age of 16. And he ruled and he reigned. And as long as he was doing the will of God, and it was in 2 Chronicles 26, I believe. So as long as King Uzziah was doing the will of God, he prospered and continued to prosper. But the moment King Uzziah decided that he wasn't going to follow the will of God. He was going to do things his way. He was going to take himself out of his kingship and actually operate as a priest. And so what I mean by that is he actually visited the temple and it was the priest's job to bring offering to God. But he got it in himself Pride set in, disobedience set in with King Uzziah. And he decided that he was going to be the one to bring the offerings up to God. Well, thankfully, the priest rushed in and basically forced him out, told him, this is not your job. This only goes through us priests who are in the line of Aaron. And so he got angry. King Uzziah got, yes, Claudia, just like Saul, absolutely. So King Uzziah got angry. And as he got angry, leprosy struck him. Now, you all know that when leprosy struck you, you were actually cast out of the area that you lived in. So that means for King Uzziah, he lost rulership and reign of the kingdom that he was responsible for. And then he was exiled to the other, other part of the town or, or country due to the fact that he had this leprosy. Because that's what they did for lepers back in that day. They exiled him. So he lost his kingship, he lost his rulership, he lost his reigning, and he died. He wound up dying. And that's exactly what Saul did. So Claudia, I'm glad you brought that point up. Saul did the exact same thing where Saul decided that he was going to do what he wanted to do. And yes, he actually did offer an offering up to God as well. When Samuel told him to wait, Samuel told him, I'm going to be there in seven days. Took Samuel a little bit longer, but it was still the responsibility of Samuel to actually offer up the offerings. So Saul, in his disobedience and in his pride, he also wind up not only losing his rulership to David, but he also lost his life. He died. So what I wanted to wrap up with, with you all is just to give you all some examples of what Christ did so that he could stay in his transformative place. And so what Jesus did, Jesus prayed. Jesus went away. He withdrew away with God and he prayed. Jesus rested. He rested when he needed to rest. He didn't he didn't overexert himself like we do in the natural. Like sometimes we just overexert and we just do too much when we need to be somewhere just resting and relaxing, rejuvenating ourselves. Jesus read the Holy Scriptures. He went to temple after temple teaching from the Scriptures. 
Jesus stayed in his identity as Lord and Savior, as the Messiah, as the sent one, as the Christ. He stayed in his identity. Jesus also prayed the will of God. When Jesus wanted to give up, when he was on his way to the cross, and when he got to the cross, and he lay on that cross, Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus stayed in his identity, and he didn't allow anybody or anything to change him, not the enemy, not the rulers that he encountered, not the people that he encountered that didn't want to be taught, not his family members. No one, no one took him off of his path. And that's the model that we follow. That's the model that God wants for us to keep us transformed into his likeness and into his image. So those are the points that I wanted to bring up tonight. I want to thank you all so much for sharing in the chat. That was excellent. We're going to have to do that again. And I'm going to go ahead and turn over the rest of the service to Minister Chiquita. Thank you so much.